The sport on most people's minds at this time of year is, you guessed it, baseball. When News 3's Jackie Corcoran took our cameras to Fenway Park for a chat with Wellesley's Lou Gorman, she discovered that the Sox general manager had lots to say on the subject. The 1987 season has not been the brightest for the Red Sox. However, with a man like Mr. Lou Gorman, who is entering into his fourth year as general manager and vice president of the Red Sox, we know it can't be too much longer before he turns this club around. Mr. Gorman elaborated on his beginnings in baseball. I, I went out of the, the uh, convention in 1960 uh, in Tampa, Florida, and really literally just kind of hustled myself a job. Made up a resume, talked to some people, uh, went around, didn't have many contacts in baseball, very few at that time but finally got hired by the Giants to run their Lakeland Giants ball club mm -hmm. in the Florida State League as the general manager. I didn't have the first idea what I was doing, uh, but I took the job and figured I could handle it. If I could sail a ship, I could, I could run the ball club in Lakeland. Mm -hmm. And uh, went down there and ran the ball club and did a good job, and then went from there the next year to the Pirates organization. Spent two years with them in Kinston, North Carolina, running a ball club there in the minor league level. I uh, was the executive of the year, and then later got hired by the Baltimore Orioles to move into the Orioles office mm -hmm. under Harry Dalton and Lee McPhail. After the Orioles, Mr. Gorman spent nine years with the Royals, five years with the Mariners, and four years with the Mets. He spoke of his sentimental return back to Fenway. But I'd always wanted to come back home here. I'd always wanted to be. I'd have been a Red Sox fan all my life. Uh, the Red Sox were my team and my heart, really. And when the chance came to, to come back here, I jumped at it. I had no reason to leave the Mets. I knew the Mets were going to be good. I knew the talent was there. We were going to be a strong, competitive club for a number of years, which they will be. And I felt I was happy with Frank Cashin and Doubleday. Uh, they had almost, in essence, offered me a job to stay there for as long as I wanted. Uh, I like living in Bronxville, New York, but New England was my home. I, my roots were here, my family was here, I went to college in this area, I've had so many college friends, I have nieces and nephews and brothers and sisters living all over the area, and uh, in my heart the Red Sox were always my team, and so it was a great challenge to get a chance to come home and be with your own home team. Mr. Gorman then gave us his opinion concerning the most controversial subject in baseball today, free agency. A lot of players out there you'd like to sign, but the problem is, can you afford to pay them that kind of money? Do you want to pay that kind of money? It isn't, for example, whether a Tim Raines or a, a John Morris would help a ball club. They certainly would help any club. They're fine players, but do you want to pay $5 million for them or a million eighty a year for them? That's the question you've got to answer. The economics of the game have got staggering. The Red Sox payroll five years ago was $5.6 million. Mm. Last year, our payroll was $15.2 million. So in a five-year period, our payroll went up $10 million. You can't keep increasing the payroll, particularly in our environment, where we've got a very small ballpark, 34,000-seat stadium. We have no parking income. We have average television, average concession income. We can't afford that escalation in salaries and still stay in business. So it's the economics sometimes that dictate you can't get this player. Not that right. you don't want them. Maybe you can't afford them. In your mind, what was the golden age of baseball? What was your favorite what were your favorite years? Well, of course, as a kid growing up watching Ted Williams play with the Red Sox was my favorite years. Uh, Ted was here 17 years as a player, interrupted by two war uh, tours of duty. Uh, but I love that era, watching him and the, the great Yankee club with DiMaggio and their players and the Mantle era. Uh, those are great days. But the game is still a great game. Even today, the game on the field is still a great game. What's changed dramatically in this game is the economics of it. Mm -hmm. It's the cost to get the players on the field and make the, make the, the thing happen. Mm -hmm. uh, the game itself is still great. The game on the play between the white lines can be frustrating as all get out or most exhilarating as all get out. It depends on what the game results are. Mm -hmm. But the game is still good and the talent is still good. It's just the economics that have changed the game so mm -hmm. much. What advice do you have to the young boys in Little League and the people that are in the high school baseball team? Do you have any advice for those? Sure. If you, if you really love the game and you really want one day to be a major league player, and I don't know of any other profession in the world more exciting, more rewarding than being a major league baseball player. Uh, when you look at the salaries the players make today, where the average salary is well over 400000 a year, and there are players making $1 million and $2 million, they have a pension plan that's the finest pension plan in the world. Uh, it's an exciting life. It's a dramatically fun life. And if you're playing a game, you love to play. Mm -hmm. So if you're a young man that really wants to be a big league player, be willing to work hard. Be willing to pay a price to get here. Nothing in life was ever given to you. You've got to pay a price for it. If baseball is what you want to be in a major league player, then give everything else up. Make that your goal. Dedicate yourself to that. Spend every hour in the, in the ballpark playing. You don't improve in this game unless you go out and play it. You don't improve sitting on the bench and watching it. You improve by playing the game. Put the extra time in it. Practice at it. Practice hard at it. 
dedicate yourself to it. Play every chance you get. Get in competition every chance, and have fun. Mm -hmm. Have fun doing it. Don't don't make it necessarily a work job. Make it a fun thing too. Mm -hmm. But baseball should be fun. You should go out there and have fun playing the game. But the most important thing is is the dedication and the willingness to pay a price and the willingness to work at it. Mm -hmm. Those are the key things. Baseball is the most fun when you're sitting in the stands, relaxing in the sun, and watching your home team win. This is Jackie Corcoran from Fenway Park for News 3 Wellesley. And that wraps up this edition of News 3 Wellesley. We'll leave you with some excerpts from a recent performance by the moving company, Wellesley High School's dance group. We hope you'll enjoy it, and thank you for watching. <laughs>